Like the proven false doctrine of purgatory, wherein Rome claims our Heavenly Father enjoys listening to the screams of lost souls for millions of years as they burn in a fire that Rome claims is far worse than any fire on earth, the Vatican has also invented a new doctrine about hellfire so as to make billions believe the God of heaven is a very hateful tyrant. And yes, they purposely do that. Because as also prophesied, we not only know who the man of sin is, we know all the popes are, in fact, card-carrying devil worshippers who purposely preach doctrines of demons to make the Christian God look evil. I mean, that's simply what Satanists do. You might want to check out a page that I put on my website some time ago, as well as some videos I put there regarding some scary facts that most Catholics never knew was going on in their own church. I mean, the pictures are shocking, to say the least, when it comes to satanic activity. The best way for Satan to get people to trust him working behind the scenes is for him to act as if he's a religious leader. That's how he's been able to get billions into graves awaiting the day he and all his followers will burn to ashes when the long prophesied hellfire ignites. And so, what does the Bible say about hellfire? Do people live for eternity in the flames and do Satanists really rule in hell with Satan for eternity? Or was this all fabricated by Rome? Well, when you get time, check out my Truth About Hellfire page as well. I share a lot of Bible verses there that most Christians never knew even existed because, as declared by the prophet Amos and Isaiah, most people prefer to listen to the many false prophets they call pastors instead of actually reading the Bibles themselves. I'm not going to share all of those verses here as that would make for one huge video, but I will share a few that will hopefully open the eyes of many as well as move some into checking out the dozens of other verses their pastors never told them about. Notice also, as I share these verses, that they're very basic. It's, it's actually quite easy to expose the lies. Problem is, no one can see the lie unless the truth is declared first. And so check this out. The Bible says, and this one shocks me the most, because when you read this verse, how can people actually believe that they're alive in hellfire? I mean, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so why do all the Catholic priests and the Protestant preachers who now wander after the beast declare people are alive in hellfire? Well, it's because once you obey Satan, whether you realize it like Rome or not like most Protestant preachers, you have no choice but to preach as he commands. And no, I'm not saying all the priests and the preachers are card-carrying Satanists. They are simply uneducated in biblical truth, and rightly so, as most of them were taught in the seminaries that are run by Rome. And so, like the serpent in the Garden of Eden who said to Eve, "Ye shall not surely die in Genesis 3-4, those that wander after the beast system Satan built in Rome, just as prophecy said he would, they will simply echo Satan's 6,000-year-old lie that people don't die when they sin against God. Now notice what Jesus said, when describing the fate of the wicked in Matthew 25, 46, he said this, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Did you notice the word used was everlasting punishment and not punishing? Yet most preachers out there claim it is in fact eternal punishing and not eternal punishment. And when speaking of the fate of those that refuse to obey the Lord, the apostle Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, that they will be cast into flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Everlasting destruction means just that. It has an end. Once destroyed, it stays destroyed for eternity. In other words, once the person burns up, and this includes the soul, they turn to ashes. Now, notice what Jesus said to the obedient Christians that may be martyred throughout time. He said in Matthew 10, 28, that we should fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And so everlasting destruction means both body and soul will turn to ashes. And how do I know that? Well, notice what the prophet Malachi said about the obedient Christians and what they're going to be doing after the wicked are burned up on that day. He said in Malachi chapter 4, verse 3, And ye, talking to the believers, ye shall tread down the wicked, 
for they shall be ashes under the sole of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Or notice what the Lord said about the wicked through his prophet in Isaiah chapter 47, verse 14, which was, Behold, they shall be a stubble, the fire shall burn them, they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. How, I ask, can ashes or stubble be considered living beings when even their souls are burned up by the Lord? And then why would Peter use Sodom and Gomorrah as an example for the end result of those headed for hellfire when he said what he did in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6, which was about turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example or example unto those that after should live ungodly. If people are alive in hellfire, as Rome and their many false prophets now claim, then why would Peter use the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah that turn to ashes as an example? If the wicked are alive for eternity in hellfire, then why would Peter use ashes as an example for them? And so again, I'm not going to share all the verses here like the ones about the worm not dying, the fire that is not quenched, or even the fire that burns from the midst of the people in hellfire, as Ezekiel described it. Because I share all those verses and more on that page I made about hellfire years ago. And so I pray you find time to check it out, if in fact you believe people are going to be alive in hellfire. Thank you for watching. God bless.